Good morning. It's time again for Aviator World. I am Ochwevia Ubudaga. On Aviator World, we shall be discussing human capital development in the aviation sector, with particular focus on the contributions of the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology, ANCAT, located in Zaria Kaduna State. We have the Rector, Chief Executive Officer of ANCAT, Captain Chinyara Kalu, MFR, in the studio to take on this topic. Madam, you're welcome. Thank you very much. As usual, on Aviator World, we'll take this report first. Knowledge and skills acquisition is fundamental if citizens of a country must develop an impact on the environment they live in. In this case, Certain skills and specialties are required for a country to progress in its economic transformation drive. For the aviation sector in Nigeria, the last three years have seen a major reorganization of all aspects of the industry by President Goodluck Jonathan. As part of the ongoing reforms being implemented by the Ministry of Aviation, the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology is being repositioned with a view to deliver the needed manpower to drive the sector. What we intend to do is to improve the capacity of the institution by ensuring that what the institution requires to produce qualitative, skilled and globally certified engineers for aviation industry, pilots, crew, all that is required. This school has the capacity to do that. The issue of training and retraining is what gives the professional the confidence that he is doing the, the, the right thing. Established in 1964, the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology Zaria in Kaduna State now has a robust and functional fleet of training aircraft and seasoned instructors which enabled the college to graduate over 800 students from 2011 to date. As a pioneer college, it offers courses in flying, aircraft maintenance, air traffic control, and aeronautical telecommunications. The college's immediate plan is building on collaborative partnership with reputable training institutes and colleges internationally to be able to deliver their expected results at minimal cost to the government. Government doesn't have abundant resources to do that, and so private sectors will have to come in to invest. The, the investment opportunity, it's, it's huge, it's massive. While the federal government of Nigeria is not resting on its oars at training of aviation professionals, such as pilots and aircraft maintenance engineers in foreign countries, the College of Aviation Technology is retooling with flight simulators, trainer aircraft, language laboratory, as well as up-to-date instructors, all in a bid to satisfy the manpower requirements of Nigeria's aviation sector. You're welcome back. Now, let's go straight to human capital development in the aviation sector, with particular focus on the contributions of the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology, NCAT. Captain Kalu, the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology, NCAT, was established in 1964. That yes. makes the college 50 years yes. this year. Mm -hmm. So we say congratulations first. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Now let's uh, get straight down to business of the day. What are the main objectives of NCAT? The main objective of NCAT is to offer training, to train, to offer consultancy services, as well as research. Those are the three main objective mandates given to NCAT as an institution. Okay, what are the, ch uh, what, um, are the challenges you're encountering, for instance, in uh, achieving these objectives? Uh, some of the challenges we're encountering is uh, manpower development. We need increased manpower to be able to meet the mandates that has been given to us. The other ones are infrastructures. We need adequate funding to make sure that we have all the infrastructures needed. NCAT aim and goal and desire is to be a one bus stop training institution for the aviation industry, not just in the country, but even in the sub-region and Africa as a whole. Presently, NCAT is offering over 
150 courses in the college and we intend to offer even much more courses and you agree with me that in order to do that, we need a lot of capacity, we need a lot of infrastructure. Indeed, the federal government, Mr. President, and the Honorable Minister of Aviation have really tried to provide uh, many of the infrastructures and facilities we need, but we still need a lot more in order to meet the need in the industry. Okay, well, you, you've mentioned uh, as one of your major challenges, uh, funding. Um, how do you go about generating your own revenue? Because I imagine that you have to, some way, generate revenue. The federal government uh, provides the needed funding for the running of the college. Um, and then we have internal, internally generated revenue to augment whatever the federal government is providing. So this is how we uh, get funding for the college. Of course, we will appreciate grants of any sort to help us augment and provide the needed facilities and manpower development needed in the college. Okay. Now, do you also source, uh, do, you, do, you, do you have tuition, your tuition fees, for instance, are they a source of funding too for you? Yes, for your that is how we get the internal. You don't need generated. to remit anything to government or anything like that? Well, the government expects us to remit about 25% to them, but yes. Okay. Um, let's go to um, what you offer. You've mentioned that you have some 150 courses. Now let's talk about those courses and in what departments they fit in, or do you call them schools? We call them schools. So let's yes. talk about that. We have five schools in the college. We have the flying school. We have the air traffic uh, communication school. We have the Aeronautical Telecommunication Engineering School. We have Aircraft Maintenance Engineering School. And the last but not the least, the Management School. Okay. And your facilities, uh, what, what kind of training facilities do you have? Now we we're talking e equipment, we're talking um, infrastructure. Yes. Uh, we have a number of um, facilities if we are going to offer, one, or as we are offering 150 courses. Uh, we have about 25 aircraft, both single engine, twin engine. We have the TB20, TB9. We have the Beach, Ver Beach Baron 58. And then we have the TBM 850. We have Bell 206 aircraft for training purposes. And then um, uh, we have the Alsim Simulator 2, Alsim Simulator. We have the 3D Visual Tower. We have wing towel, we have non-destructive texting equipment, we have uh, um, a lot of equipment, uh, sim smaller trainers like uh, system trainers in the air uh, aircraft maintenance engineering school. And okay. we have... Um, do you, sorry to interrupt you. Do you, do you have um, um, helicopters, for instance? Yes, we have the Bell 206. Is it's a, a helicopter? Yes, please. Okay, what, what do you use it for? Is it for, the, for flying or...? What? The essence of the Bell 206 aircraft is for flying, but up, uh, as of now, we have not received it. It is until we receive it. But the other snag with that is that it is for advanced training. Okay. So we need the smaller one, basic helicopter for ab initial training. It, as I have said, the Bell 206 is for training, but we will use it at a later stage of training presently we need urgently need basic helicopter for basic training for initial training okay now part of uh, the flying school uh, curricula would include training for uh, pilots training for cabin crew yes now i want us to look at the, the I, I know that in the past um candidates or students for cabin training, cabin crew training, had to go to Lagos, maybe the C school in Apapa, for instance, mm. for training courses. Do you have such facilities now at NCAT in Zaria? Yes, we do. Um, NCAT has trained well over 400 students as cabin crew uh, for the industry. We, we have acquired a Boeing 737-200 series for cabin crew training uh, which they will use to do evacuation and um, uh, so many other exercises. 
and then we have a swimming pool where they practice um, um, uh, they practice various exercises in the swimming pool, similar to what they have in the sea school. Okay, I, I've heard that um, training and refresher courses for new type aircraft, um, students would have to go outside the country if they were to get such. Why is that so? Uh, it is so because uh, we don't have such facilities in Nigeria, but NCAT is working hard to procure a 737 simulator for the training and refresher training for airline pilots. Mm, okay. So um, in the near future, how yes. near is that future? Uh, we are hopeful this year, to this 2014. Okay. Uh, I read somewhere that um, for about six to seven years, NCAT was unable to, or um, did not, um, uh, could not uh, graduate some categories of students. Mm -hmm. What was responsible for this? Um, yes, yeah, those were flying students, and that was during the time when the country, the economy of the country, really took a news dive. Um, we didn't have fuel. Our aircraft, uh, there was no insurance cover. We had no spare parts and a host of other things. And there was a time, too, uh, that our aircraft were damaged. So it took a long time before we could um, uh, acquire a new set of aircraft and then um, um, process all the, um, all the things required for this new aircraft and then get the insurance and get the fuel and the spare parts. But that has become history now. The college now is up and about with its responsibility. We are graduating students. And um, in all, the college has graduated over, over 12,000 professionals okay. in the industry in various areas, pilots, uh, cabin crew, air traffic controllers, and uh, engineers, and all that. So the college is working hard and will continue to work hard. And we hope in future to be able to offer more courses. Presently, the uh, college has started offering postgraduate diploma in aviation management, and they hope to introduce uh, a degree program in electrics and uh, uh, electronics and uh, uh, BN and all that. So the college is really working hard to make sure that it is meeting its mandate on aviation training. Now, the 21st century is uh, here where we are now. What are, what's the college doing to reposition itself to meet the demands? Uh, the college is doing a lot. We are looking at our length of training in the past. Um, um, you yourself have mentioned when it took the college six to seven years to graduate students. As I said, that is history now. We are working hard to graduate our students in two years, and we will want to reduce it to one year because that is what is obtainable out, outside of the country. And then for our air traffic controllers, uh, we used to take 68 weeks to graduate one course in air traffic controller, and we want to reduce that to about 36 weeks. So we are doing uh, so many things to reduce the length of training without compromising with quality and standard as required. And of course, NCA is there making sure that they are auditing NCAT and making sure that standard is maintained. And we too are working hard to make sure standard uh, is maintained in the college in spite of the fact that we want to reduce length of training and we want the college to become center of excellence. Okay. Um, even uh, the ECOWAS recently um, awarded the College Center of Excellence wow. and they want to partner with the college to that effect. Wow, congratulations in Thank that you regard. Very much. Now, um, they, you've mentioned that you have, um, you've had some 12,000 or so students graduate since inception. Um, on a yearly basis, what does that come to? Uh, well, we, we don't have a fixed a fixed figure, there have been times we graduate up to um, 800, 1,000 in a year. So it's average of that, and we are increasing by the day. Uh, in the past, at any given time, we used to have about 200, no, 300 students in the hostel, but presently we have over 500 students. In fact, we, we have uh, challenges with accommodation. We, are, we built a new hostel. A new hostel was just commissioned last year, 
and now is bursting to the full. Uh, we are looking for another accommodation uh, in order to be able to accommodate our teaming students. Okay. Um, for prospective students, what is the entry qualification requirement in order to gain admission? Is uh, we require the sciences, five credits in the sciences. That would be like entering the university. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Are there age limits? Yes, if you are going to fly, you should not be more than 26 years if you are going to become a commercial pilot uh, license holder. But if it is for private pilots, uh, there's no age limit. For that, we assume you are going to fly for fun. So you just come in with your money and we train you. And how much is that? 2,000. Um, 2.5 million. 2.5 million naira. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have many students of the female gender? Yes, we do. Um, I don't have the exact figure, but in all in the college, I will, we will have nothing less than 100 students as female students in the college and mm -hmm. um, um, doing various courses in the college. But in flying school, we should have up to 20 female students in okay. doing flying. Uh, but you are, you are the first female pilot in Nigeria. Yes. Now, do, when, you, when we talk about that, one, one realizes in um, comments you've made in the press and public that you are passionate about female students, mm. female pilots, yes. that is. Yes. But uh, even though you say you have 20 currently, there doesn't seem to be that much of an interest. And I've heard about comments uh, where you say, um, to the female students need to be encouraged to come up. Yes. So how, why, why, why the lack of interest in the first place? I think part of it is, um, um, well, I say um, upbringing, uh, things they've been taught while growing up, uh, beliefs they've had, and it will take a lot of effort to disabuse their mind. Many of the the girls, especially from that part of the country, believe that their place is in the home to bring up children. Uh, they don't want to go to school or they don't think they should go to school and let alone to fly. And some of them have this phobia that flying is so risky, is so dangerous uh, that a woman shouldn't even come near it. But nonetheless, we are trying to change that mindset. We are encouraging them that uh, Flying could be fun, and a woman has what it takes to be a flight instructor. A woman is patient, she's understanding, and <laughs> she's loving, and uh, it, it really, it will do the industry good to have many more female flight instructors coming in because they have what it takes. Well, I would say that it's one thing to say, I wish you could have more women in, but mm. what is Enka doing about uh, encouraging more young ladies to be interested in coming to flying school? Anytime I have opportunity to talk on careers, I encourage the girls to please try and uh, come on board and replace some of us because uh, I think we are getting old. Speaking of which, <laughs> how many female pilots do we have currently in Nigeria? You should know I no, I don't know the exact number. Are they up to 100 maybe? No, 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 they are not up to 100. Not wow. Yet. Okay, but is there, is there anything being done to catch the young ladies, say, in secondary school, for instance? Yes. Um, in the college now, we are trying to introduce what we call um, Pioneer Aviation Secondary School. And the essence of that secondary school is to encourage uh, the younger ones to go into, uh, into the aviation industry. So we believe by the time that school is set up, and we want to start it in September, by the time that school is set up, many of the girls there will end up pursuing aviation uh, okay. as a career. Okay. Now, let's uh, look at your plans to upgrade your institution to possibly a degree-awarding institution. Mm. What, what are you working on at the moment? Uh, we are working on a number of things. Recently, the National Board for Technical Education has given us accreditation to uh, offer HND on um, electrical electronics courses, HND as well as OND. We are working on that. We are, in a, uh, we are seeking affiliation 
with Embraer-Riddle University in America and with uh, Emirates Aviation College in Dubai and, uh, and even um, Amadou Bello University and so many others so that we'll be able to offer uh, degree courses in aviation related subjects and courses. Okay, what, uh, what expansion plans do you have? I mean, your, all your courses are co-located, the five of them, yes. in Zaria. Yes. Are there plans to go to other parts of the country? Yes, already. What are these plans? Already we are in MENA. We have a campus in MENA and we have planned. Our, our intention was that by this time we would have been in Lagos already, but we had some hitches which is delaying us, but it has not stopped us. And we want to go to the eastern flank of the nation as well. So these are the uh, planned expansions we intend because we want to bring our services closer to our customers mm. and to make the most of the uh, weather condition because there is a time um, in, the, in the year where the weather is not too good in the south, we can come to the north. And when it's not too good in the north, like now, with the Hamatan Hills, we can move our operations down to the south in order for us to continue to fly and have a seamless operation. Okay, let's move on to another uh, tack, as it were. In the aviation industry, there's been uh, quite a bit of transformation in the various uh, sectors of it. Is anything being done in uh, the College of Aviation Technology in terms of transforming the, the school, the institution? A lot is being done. As I've already said, uh, before the inception of the college or all along, the college has never offered any postgraduate degree um, uh, courses, but now we are doing that. Uh, the college has never been uh, accredited by uh, National Board of Technical Education. We are doing that. The college has, um, has been accredited and has become a member of ICAO Train Air Plus. Uh, we are a member of um, um, Accreditation Board International, we are located in USA, and we are a member of uh, African Aviation Training Organization in Africa here. So the college is moving to places to make sure that it has international recognition and standard. And as I said, uh, we have had students come from 80. Uh, five countries in the past, and we have trained over 600 students uh, of foreign origin in the past, and we want to do that to position the college and have a key in in the transformation agenda so that the college is not left behind. Actually, the college should be in the forefront because education should be in the forefront of transformation and in the forefront of change. Okay, talking about change, what is the role of NCAT in uh, the Aerotropolis, Nigeria's Aerotropolis project? Um, the, the college in, uh, intends to develop courses so that uh, when the Aerotropolis has taken off uh, fully, um, aviators or will come to the college to do their training and be able to meet the manpower need with the Aerotropolis. Okay. Now, just before we do have to go, um, there's a question I'd like to ask you. 50 years this year, what are your plans for NCAT? How do you plan to celebrate your golden anniversary? NCAT intends to celebrate it in a very big way. Uh, the last time we graduated, we did graduation ceremony. We're always doing graduation almost on a weekly basis as students graduate, uh, finish their mm -hmm. course, we graduate them. But we have never done any big celebration. The last one we did was about 10 years ago. That's 2004 there. About. Yeah, 2004. So this year, we intend to have a big graduation ceremony. We intend to celebrate our 50 years and look back, reflect back, and thank God for the many good things God has done and what the Honorable Minister as well as Mr. President has enabled NCAT to achieve in these 50 years. Okay, and on a lighter note, I, uh, I gathered that um, you flew yourself down to Abuja from Zaria. Yes. Do you constantly fly, fly yourself across the country, around everywhere you go? 
Well, yes, where my work demands, I fly because I want to remain current. I want to keep my license current, yes. Wow, that makes me envious. I should go flying too. You should. <laughs> yeah, you are welcome and invited anytime. Okay. Well, this is about all we have time for on this edition of Aviator World. We have been joined this morning by the Rector Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology, NCAT, Captain Chinyere Kalu, MFR. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Do tune in to Aviator World next Saturday, same time. On behalf of the production team, I am Ochwivio Budaga. Do have yourself a restful weekend. Good morning. <laughs>